I'm Tom Crandall, a co-owner of TR Crandall Guitars. Alex and I started this 10 years ago on 3rd Street, a much smaller place. And we'd both been employees at Matt Umanoff Guitars. And we'd just been talking about putting together a guitar store in the kind of fashion that we really liked. And I had a stockpile of 76 guitars in my apartment, or guitars, mandolins, banjos, mostly guitars. So that was our seed inventory. I'd been piling these things up for years. And, you know, we went from 76 to a couple of hundred. I don't know what we're up to now, but it, now it's like a real guitar store. This place has an inventory unlike any other shop I've been to. And it's, uh, it, it, your first time here kind of kind of takes you aback. The sheer volume of killer quality, but more importantly, affordable guitars. You know, this is, this is for the working musician. The focus is a lot on the repair shop. You know, I'm a repair guy, Alex is a repair guy. Uh, so repair and restoration is what we do, and we find a lot of instruments needing work. I would say on a weekly basis, there's something exciting that comes through here. I mean, I've worked on some historically interesting instruments. Uh, Jimi Hendrix's bedside guitar, uh, that stands out as something extremely interesting. It was a 1921 uh, stall, so Larson Brothers guitar. Um, I w recently did a, one of Johnny Cash's guitars, one of his favorite guitars. And you hold something like that and you go, wow, just think of what, this, what, what was done with this guitar. You know, uh, Johnny Cash waking up in the middle of the night playing this thing and writing a song. You know, Jimi Hendrix on an acoustic guitar in his bedroom. You know, can you imagine? <laughs> this shop is different than other ones. Just there's everything in here is just so vintage and nice. <laughs> like we, we even for the repair shop, we don't we don't take in a lot of like really like kind of the cheaper setups and stuff like um, not that there's anything wrong with that. We just have so much other stuff to do. And you know, we're working on old vintage Martins, old vintage Gibsons, like. We have really high standards for what works on our wall because we are still really a vintage guitar store. So it has to, it, it, we only carry Collings and we recently started carrying Iris guitars. Both of those have a kind of vintage, you know, uh, lineage and feel to them. And those are the only new lines we carry. Uh, everything else comes to us in a variety of different ways. So a lot of people contact us, or we get a really cool, interesting guitar in, and people want to trade six guitars for that one or something like that. So our, our inventory just keeps growing just without us trying too hard. Yeah, so this guitar is cool. Uh, it is the earliest J45 that's ever turned up. Uh, one batch earlier than... than uh, anybody's ever seen and it was it was interesting my response to it was interesting because when I pulled opened the case I saw 1942 you know, this sunburst to me is like classic 1942 and I pulled it out and I'm going what is going because it's not a color that I'm accustomed to seeing on banner j45s but then as the, the more I looked at it I, I had to go with my original impression I've seen a j50 from 1942 with exactly the same finish on the back and sides and then this, to me, is just like every sunburst that Gibson did in 1942 looks like this. So, you know, I set it aside and said, well, that's an interesting guitar. It's going to require some more research. And Alex, when he came in, was like, well, I don't know. You know, is it refinished? What's going on here? And then he started to research it. And we realized that this was the earliest J45 to ever turn up. And that it's consistent with the finish that you would see in that time period. It's just so clean, you immediately go, you know, and of course I'm going over this thing with a loop and trying to find any indication that this thing has been oversprayed or refinished or something, and there just isn't. So that's kind of exciting. And this again is sort of the one-off, you know, when are you gonna find another uh, J45 from this batch? My guess is maybe never. <laughs> No, this is a beautiful, beautiful workhorse of an instrument. It's a 1964 Epiphone Casino. This guitar, it's fully hollow, has two P90 single coil pickups in it, and uh, 
I kind of think of it as the ultimate couch guitar because it, it's so resonant as an acoustic instrument. And then, you know, when you plug it in, just the sustain and project projection is, it's quite infatuating. I figured 10 years ago, at that time, I'd worked on 15,000 guitars, right? At this point, I don't even know. So I feel like I've at least had some sort of experience with practically everything out there. The most beautiful thing I've seen from, you know, Tom and Alex and everybody here is that they put serious time into their relationships. They, you know, this, Tom is one of the busiest uh, luthiers maybe in the world. And, you know, if he has somebody that asks him uh, a question, he will stop what he's doing and give you his full attention and, until, uh, you know, you feel comfortable and understand the answer that he's given you. And that's, uh, that's, that's pretty rare. Tom's a great repairman and like, he kind of has this really cool, like simplicity about showing you a really complicated repair. Like in the end, you're like, oh wow, yeah, that makes sense. It was really, you know, it wasn't as hard as it needed to be, but also he knows what he's doing. So it makes it easy in a way. And it's, it's really cool. Like how he's, he's just so open to showing you know, I don't mind giving away secrets as, you know, a lot of people say, well, aren't you afraid of giving away secrets? I like, know it make my life so much easier, right? Because if so much of my time is spent undoing bad repairs, if I didn't have to do that, but you know, I, there were, I will never run out of repairs. I will die on my deathbed. I'll be thinking, oh, I didn't finish that, you know, whatever I'm, whatever was on my bench. I mean, you, you can see that all the, the, the to do pile here is unbelievable. And during the pandemic, we were up to a backlog of 175 guitars. And so I love giving away whatever, you know, secrets. I'm, they're not intended to be secrets. They're just ideas that I've developed throughout the years and experimented with and found, found out that worked. Having a repair shop in some ways is not super remarkable. Doing it in Manhattan is a whole different set of challenges. You know, when you read articles on repair shops are often in some like rural setting and it's Id idyllic. And here we are in the Lower East Side in the thick of it, you know, and there's, you know, you can see there's graffiti everywhere and you come into this place and it's like, wow, this is like not only a really cool guitar shop, but the repair shop is, you know, we're, we're we can do anything here. And, you know, to me, that's, that's an interesting thing that right in the heart of the Lower East Side of Manhattan, you've got an extensive repair shop doing all sorts of interesting things. We use tradition here. I mean, pretty much exclusively high glue and shellac are our big friends and traditional methods. And here we are stuck in the middle of this kind of crazy New York scene. I love it. <laughs> Well, I've used the stereo strings myself for at least 30 years, if not more. As far back as I can remember, let's put it that way, when I, would, when I was experimenting with strings at some point, I settled on the Dario. So I've been playing them forever. I've experimented with a whole whole bunch of strings. And honestly, the, the first time I, I really felt a, a significant um, impact on the uh, use of a particular string was from the NYXL series. It was a treat to kind of hear that bring the guitar to a, to a new level and, you know, kind of project itself in a clear, more resonant way. The interesting thing for the store is before we opened, we were trying to decide what to carry for strings. And we already knew that the big box stores would have all of these different varieties and brands of strings. We just wanted to carry one brand. So what we decided to do was just talk to all every professional inst uh, guitar player we knew and I'd say what should we carry right and unanimously there was not a single dissenting voice everybody said to dario so it was easy for us to say let's just carry to dario strings if they want something else they can bring it in they can go someplace else and get strings but you know the, the quality is always impeccable and you know you got everything you'd need in a Daddario string, so it was it was easy, a very easy choice. And we've never carried anything but since, you know. And again, it's our, it's we sort of curated. We made the decision for the customer. Oh, what kind of string should I get? Well, here's what we have. 